Yeah, greetings, tales from the jails. And today it's not just tales from the jails, it's tales from Merry England, Great Britain, eh? That precious stone set in a silver sea, yeah? Here we are. Yeah, today I've been reading in the news uh, that uh, a, serving, a serving British soldier has been arrested on terrorism charges after planting what looked like a bomb and uh, attempting to uh, disrupt society. He's uh, a typical English name, actually, Daniel Abed Khalif, yeah? yeah? Just what you'd expect, no? I mean, forget Tommy Atkins. It's Tommy this and Tommy that. Ain't none of that. It's Khalid this and Abdab do da that. I mean, I'm not a racist, but come on, if you're in the British Army, you serve the British people. You don't go around planting bombs, do you? Also, want to rant a little bit about the about the Metropolitan Police. I mean, we all know that these days there's a lot of nonsense being said about the the Metropolitan Police. But listen, this there's a big headline going out. You can see it. Just have a look on your uh, just search the internet. The Metropolitan Police are deliberately recruiting semi-literate police officers or individuals, yeah? Recruiting them. They say it's in the name of diversity. What what will they be re recruiting next? Yeah, my granny, yeah? It's only right we're going to have diversity. Let, let's have a 90-year-old granny. We're going to need a few of them, like the special force. Yeah, the, 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 the grannies. Yeah, why not? Well, you like my bowler hat, by the way. I, I think since, since, since the Mad Hatter's Tea Party, we might as well all join in. I, all I need is a sign that says ten shillings and sixpence. In fact, I might put one in. Yeah, at least people know where I am. Yeah, I'm in Wonderland here. I've disappeared down the rabbit hole. And that's no wonder this world's gone mad. I mean, and listen, they've also... Pretty Patel is uh, chairing a a, a, a a committee looking into diverse... Uh, groups that are forming themselves in the Metropolitan Police. Apparently there's 200 different ones. There's things like the LGBT Police Officers Special Group. Uh, they've, they've, they've even got a, a part of the the Police Federation for, for black police officers. I mean, why should black police officers be treated any differently than any other uh, ethnic minor, any ethnic group. Why? I can't. I can't see that. I mean, if you're joining the Great British Police, if you join the Metropolitan Police, then you join the police as a police officer. You're a police officer. You're not a black police officer or a LGBT transgender police officer. You are a police officer. It's like joining the the, the prison system. If you join the prison system, you're a prison officer. I'll tell you something else about the police as well. This absolutely surprised me. Police constables nowadays are advised that they may not, on their own, arrest somebody for a criminal offence. They have to pass it up, up the chain to their duty inspector who makes a decision as to whether or not somebody should then be arrested. They can't do it on their own. What the hell's all that about? It says on their warrant card that they've got all the powers of a powers of a police constable. A police constable has powers of arrest. It can't be taken away by some decision from management. That is what the law states. But the police have decided that it's got to be uh, police inspectors that uh, decide as to who's going to be arrested. It's absolutely. It's gone. Uh, it's gone quite crazy. And as for this diversity thing, there's no wonder the world's going mad. Eh? It, I mean, it is diverse, isn't it? When, when they're putting male prisoners with all the genitalia, block and tackle, eh, full honeymoon equipment, into women's jails as prisoners. And they wonder what's going to happen. I'd say what's going to happen. They're going to end up with female prisoners being raped. That's what's going to happen. And as for diverse groups in the Metropolitan Police or any other police force, it's as bad as the Masons. They're all over the place. And they, listen, 
I've been to Freemason dues. They're very nice people. But they've got, they're looking after their own vested interests. So if a Freemason chief officer or governor encounters wrongdoing with a prison officer who is also a Freemason, it's the Freemasons' code to protect that individual that's, that kicks in. So the, the, the discipline system goes that way. I know this sounds odd, but I have seen people who are members of the Freemason movement absolutely walk away from criminal offences because the prosecution has deliberately, by other Freemasons, been bodged. I saw one man, he was charged with theft of a home office property and it, it stipulated in the charge that was read out at court against him that on such and such a date, at such, approximately such and such a time, he did misappropriate the property. Now they had retrieved the property of the home office from his home. They'd taken this property from his home and it was evidence presented to the court except the prosecution had stipulated what date he did it. Now, that wouldn't be by accident, and the individual that was charged with this could absolutely prove, beyond doubt, that he was not even in the country on the date that was stated in the charge, because he was overseas. I believe he was in Spain on holiday. So he could prove that, and therefore, the whole case was dismissed, and that was the end of that. They didn't need to stipulate when when this was done. They needed to stipulate that the property had been misappropriated with an intent to deprive the owner of permanent use, hence theft. But no, they didn't do that, because it was the Funny Handshake Brigade. It's dangerous to society to have groups with specific... Uh, needs and working within the police and the, and the criminal justice system because it undermines the, uh, the the trust of the public in in the police and in the criminal justice system, especially if you've got members of the uh, the judiciary who are Freemasons, and I've seen people go up before the judiciary. I don't know what they make some kind of signs like that three fingers yeah meaning the three degrees of the freemasons or 33 degrees as some of them are which is uh, the highest ranking uh, free in the freemasonic movement i'm not a freemason myself my father was invited but he would not join because he was a roman catholic and the roman catholic church absolutely decry uh, the Freemasonic movement so he wouldn't join he went to see his priest and the priest said no it's it's against the teachings of the Catholic Church so he didn't join his friend who had invited him did join and uh, he went on to be a chief constable but that's the way it goes isn't it I mean who can say he might have gone on to be a chief constable whether or not but you never know do you Strange world. But listen, you've got serving soldiers, Abdul Khalif, yeah, who's now in police custody, awaiting uh, a visit to the Old Bailey on Monday, where he's being charged with terrorist offences. A serving soldier. Where do we go from here? Yeah. But, uh, in the, and in the name of diversity, we've got semi-literate police officers patrolling the streets. So if you get arrested, if you get charged with one of them, the they won't be able to take your name and address, so uh, don't worry about that. Say, I'd like to you to write this down, yeah? My name is Mohammed Al Fayyad, whatever it is, you know. Make it up. They won't be able to write it down because they're semi literate. How is that helping society? Anyway, don't forget on the 31st, that's next Tuesday at 7 pm here, we've got uh, a QA session. And uh, I will be here to answer questions, whatever you want to ask. I mean, you can ask me anything, you know. I'm quite 
game for a laugh. Hey, what about this? I could put my... Yeah, my cat badge in my hat. Do you think I should? Yeah? Put my cat badge in the hat. Go on, then. I persuaded myself to do it, yeah? Instead of me baldy head, yeah? What, what do you think? It's not going in. No. Come on, you bastard. Oh, there we are. There we are. We're soldiers of the Queen, my boys, who've been my boys, who've seen my boys. Yeah. There you go. Anyway, I'm not going to ring the I've got finally found it, by the way. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, we'll see you then. We're going to have a Q&A session. Ding dong ding, yeah. Larry's running for the door now, grabbing his wellies. Yeah, you leave it in your pants, Larry. Them goats don't deserve this. I'm going to read you a poem now. Are you ready? That's, uh, I'm not going to sing to you today. I'm going to read you a poem. This is by Robert Frost. It's, of course it is, it's The Road Not Taken. As you no doubt guessed, yeah? Are you sitting comfortably? Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveller. Long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for the passing there, I'd warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves, no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. Okay. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere, ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wooden eye. I took the one less travelled by, and that has made all the difference. The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. Right, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget, there's a link down there to my book. If anybody wants to buy me a coffee, well, there we go. I'll definitely drink it. Hot, black, no sugar. I might convert it into a Jack Daniels, you know. So Tuesday, don't forget, 7pm here. That's the 31st of January. We're going to do a Q&A. And that's to celebrate 5,000 supporters on YouTube. Thank you very much. We'll meet again.